Thank you and good morning. So my talk today is effectively around the democratization of 3D printing. Effectively, the role that 3D printing has in making that happen. Before we go there, you hear a lot of mention about the democratization of innovation. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what that actually means. Just to break it down and take a kind of a backward step of what democratization of innovation really means. So that before we do that, we have to consider where does innovation really come from? So a lot of work has been done in this area uh, and a professor in MIT called um, Eric Von Hippel has done a lot of work about where do companies innovate? Where does the actual, the initial idea of an innovation of a new product, how does it all come about? And the first kind of traditional thinking about innovation or the, the, the stereotypical view of how innovation comes around is that it's a traditional manufacturer-centered um, innovation paradigm. Effectively, that manufacturers look at the industry and they look at the users and they say, you know, you have a problem here. I'm going to try and fix it. Here is my solution. And they try and make profit out of that. And that's the way most traditional manufacturing-centered innovation will be worked. However, the research that was done in this area showed that 75% of new product innovations failed. So this professor realized, he said, you know, maybe this paradigm doesn't work. Maybe it's another way that innovation actually comes to the fore. So when he looked, they did this very big analysis of around 120 to 140 different new product innovations. And when they dug really, really deep into where the innovations came from, it actually turned out that 80% of the new product innovations came from user innovation. So a user would initially come up with the idea, you know, I'm going to take this product, I'm going to modify it a little way, and they're going to work with this product and come up with a new innovation. And then eventually the company would look back at that and say, oh, this is how people are using my product, and either to come out with a new variation of that product or a new product entirely. So that's a very interesting way. So we come up with a new paradigm, and this new paradigm was called a user-centered or democratized innovation paradigm. And effectively how this works is that the user innovates to solve their own problems, and then they freely reveal those to innovations to everybody. As Avi said earlier about Chuck Hall, he looked at the problem, he came up with the idea of 3D printing, and everybody's benefiting from today, and open sourcing the whole idea of STL, the file format, has really benefited everybody. So that's a perfect example of how innovation is now completely democratized. So I'll give you some more examples of democratization prior to kind of 3D printing. Printed uh, circuitry, circuit CAD software, surgical equipment, uh, the Apache operating software, outdoor consumer products, and mountain biking equipment. And effectively what you see here in this graph is that around 20% from this analysis, 20% of the users and they have all these different markets, would be classified as being kind of innovative, where they would look at an idea and try and come up with a solution. Like the mountain biking example, they would be adding components to their bicycles or trying to make it go downhill a little bit faster. So these are the people that are really innovative, around 20% of users across different sectors. That was kind of an average number. However, I kind of propose here today that the whole 3D printing industry in itself is a perfect example of the democratization of innovation. If you look at all the companies that are out there and the new companies that are on the scene, going back to RepRap, MakerBot, Ultimaker, Forum Labs, like the Blueprinter and ourselves. All these companies came about from looking at existing technologies and feeling, you know, we want something different. We want to make a modification to this technology and really make this technology more for ourselves. And from that, businesses all came about. So that's the kind of basic idea of democratization of innovation. So where does 3D printing come in? So what effect will 3D printing have in this process? What will it do to this process of the democratization innovation? So as we know, 3D printing really lowers the barriers to entry. It enables everybody to innovate. As you've seen earlier, anybody can innovate now. People, kids in school rooms, people at home, housewives, anybody that has an idea, they could say, you know what, if I had a little device for doing this, or if I could clasp this here or keep that open, that's a bit of an innovation, and that's what's going to happen. So 3D printing really enables that. The second thing is that the cycles are faster. So it's quicker to go through the various cycles of the innovation cycle. As you know, most design is an iterative process. 
You start off with the original design idea and you keep on working your way through the idea. The models are more accurate, so the models are actually closer to what you actually want at the end of the day, which is a big thing. And it's a closer representation of your finished product. So you can print that in a color objects or color components or more functional parts that are actually very close to what you're really going to use at the end of the day. So I think what's going to happen here is that 3D printing is going to accelerate and it's also going to enable more than that 20% of people that we've seen earlier. It's going to push it up to 30 or 40 or 50% of people are going to be more innovative. And I think the end result of that is that we're going to have far more user-centered products. When we pick up our products in the future, we're going to feel that this product was made just for us. You know, and that's the real power of 3D printing. So, just to give you a little bit of background about, about who I am, so um, as Duncan said earlier, so I'm the co-inventor and CEO of MCore Technologies. And we've invented a new 3D printing platform, which we believe is going to really revolutionize how people design, innovate, and communicate in the future. Quite simply, Air Machine takes your designs and turns them into physical reality, like all the other 3D printers that you see here today. But we did it in an extremely low-cost way it's a full color solution and it's a very environmentally safe. Um, if I bring you back and uh, talk about a bit of the journey, uh, my brother and I came up with this idea for this machine almost 10 years ago, as Duncan mentioned. Almost sometimes embarrassed to say how long it took us to get to this point. But our first machines, when people talk about an in-house machine, was in the front room of my house. Uh, I did the mechanical stuff, my brother did all the electrical stuff. And we worked on this process to get to a point where we were able to show people a machine that could take regular office paper, it would take paper that you get in your regular photocopier and make a 3D printed object directly from office paper. And that's what we've done. So we've looked at the industry and we said, if we could make a machine that was extremely easy to use, just like a regular photocopier or a printer, extremely low cost consumables and full color, you know, people ask the question, why did you bother making a machine that printed in full color parts? Well, why do people bother making the TV go from black and white to color? We all see in color, we think in color, and it's a very important part to be able to print in color. We were very passionate about making a machine that was very, very office friendly and very green. We wanted a machine that wouldn't produce any biohazards, any smells, any dust from the components. And that was a very core part of our business, was to make a machine that was very green. And we wanted a material that anybody can grab their hands on, a very ubiquitous material that you can just go into your office store or you could go into your local shop around the corner and pick up a couple of reams of paper and put it into the trade printer. Don't get it. Put water. Just water. And we felt if we could do this, that we, we would make 3D printing accessible for everybody. That we would really be democratizing the whole idea of 3D printing and trying to make a printer that effectively had almost no running costs. We wanted to make a machine, that sounds ridiculous, that had zero running costs. That people could print hundreds to thousands of designs and not have to worry about the printing costs anymore. And that was our goal. So, the solution we've come up with is the world's first paper-based full-color 3D printer. And it's a very simple formula. We call this the MCOR formula. On the left-hand side, you put in three reams of paper. You combine it with the MCOR iris printer to produce tough and durable and full-color parts. And people have a misconception of what paper parts are going to be like. They think they're going to be like an origami or a kind of a paper mache, but they're actually very sturdy and very strong. And the color, because the color comes from ink and paper, and ink has been designed to work with paper, we get a very strong color representation of our parts. Some examples of the iris, we believe that we're on the starting point of producing photorealistic color parts. Um, our color gamut is extremely high, because as I said, ink and paper are designed to work together we would have a range of somewhere close to over a million colors in our color gamut. And we have a very high color fidelity, very high resolution on the 2D printing model. The ink that we use in the machine is water-based ink. So the entire solution, the paper, the water-based adhesive, and the water-based ink makes the solution a completely biodegradable solution. So when you're finished with your part, 
or you're finished with the waste material, you can simply put it into your paper recycle bin. You're not generating any landfill, you don't do anything special with it, you just escape it, put it into your green bin and it's recycled. And best of all for any user, the running cost on these machines is so low, you're looking at an average running savings of around 80% against the next color technology. So here are some examples that you can see on a boot, but just to show you here, because I couldn't bring them all over. As we've seen earlier, taking the idea of a photogrammetry, taking photographs and trying to make those photographs into 3D is a very exciting area, and it just shows the potential of the consumer interaction, how consumers will really get in and embrace this area of 3D. In the packaging industry, architecture, the MCAT, especially in industrial design and product design areas, and of course, our, um, our sales director, Brian, who you'll see in the booth, so you can, you can compare the model with his face and see how accurate it is. And one of our more recent prints, believe it or not, this is a print in our machine. So you can see their color is really just starting to get better and better in our technology, and we believe that we will be getting to for a quality prints in the future. And because it's paper, you get all these great things. It's ubiquitous. It is very durable, it's a very cost-effective solution. It's not messy, and it's a non-hazardous product. So these are all the great things that we have going for us. So I just want to give two quick commercial examples of how people are using the technology. The first is in UCL in Belgium. It's a university, a French-speaking university, where uh, educators, one in every two French-speaking students. And their challenge was to use 3D printing to reduce the operating time in the whole maxillofacial uh, reconstruction area. They wanted to create models that we use as surgical guides and accurate enough to do that. The models had to be cost effective, suitable to go into an operating theater, and also models that needed to be sterilized. That was an important part to be sterilized the models. So their decision was to use our MCORE 3D printer because of the fact that, believe it or not, paper models can be sterilized. So you're actually able to sterilize these models and bring these models directly into the operating theater and not worry about contamination. Extremely low cost, as you've seen already, eco-friendly, the models are recyclable, and there's no infiltration required. So this part here has been infiltrated, but this part here hasn't. This is just straight out of the machine. So a lot of the parts you don't have to, it's not an essential part to infiltrate. So here you can see one of the quotes from the professor in the university. You know, and they feel that this is really going to open up the whole area of maxillofacial reconstruction surgery. Obviously, it's not a surgical insert. They're used for surgical guides, and they can actually also be used as a surgical mold or a form for forming kind of plates and titanium uh, plates in the area. The second example is in the area of packaging. So Unisource is a company in the US that is using air technology, and they're one of the largest independent packaging firms in North America. Again, their challenge, they make thin-walled packaging, and the packaging has individual hollows to take their product wherever they want to need. But their end product, what they actually make, is almost like a cardboard or a paper packaging. And when they will get their models made in plastic, it usually was so dissimilar from what the actual end product was that they were trying to show that it derailed the sales process that it ended up where people would look at it and not understand and say, you know, I, I don't understand what my packaging will look like. So their decision was to use our printer because of all the things we've kind of mentioned, standard office paper, durable, high resolution, and I had a proven track record in another facility in their, in their plant. But here you can see an example. So what we have here on the left-hand side is the printed view of the packaging part that they wanted, and the second image is it actually folded over. So it's a living hinge that's printed right in the middle, and because it's paper, paper doesn't work hard and like plastic. So you can flex over paper hundreds and thousands of times, and it's not going to break like plastic, the same mode as plastic will. And they found that this was a great use, and it was very close to the similar product that they had at the end of the day. More importantly, the product cost was around 5% out of plastic, and it sped up the whole process going from one week, uh, which is something that used to take a couple of months. So with air technology, you can take color printing, print a high resolution color image onto a paper part that's flexible, flex it over, and have a packaging model in a couple of hours rather than waiting a couple of weeks. So 
It is a fourth step and a big milestone for MCOR Technologies was to enable the consumer to get access to 3D printed content. Air price point of our machine does not enable a consumer to have the air machines at home in the house. But we wanted to be given this, the people on the street the accessibility to 3D printing content. So we're very excited. We launched this last week in the US. Uh, we have done a partnership with Staples to enable the consumer to get full color, low cost, high resolution parts through the Staples store. So that site has gone live. So you can go to that site now live today. And on that site it enables you to do three things. You can directly upload your parts. So if you have your own parts on your own laptop, you can upload your parts, find out what the cost will be and get them printed and shipped out to you. The second thing you can do is that you can go to a catalog or you can go to somebody else's design that has already designed those components and download those designs to get them printed out. Or finally, you can generate your own store. So within six minutes, if you're a designer, you can go onto the staple site and have your own store, your own name, your own image of what you want to be, and you can decide what percentage you want every time somebody clicks on your design and gets it printed out. So it's a chance for designers to generate some revenue. So what I have here is a little video, it takes about three minutes, which will show you the first part, which is the direct upload. And this is all made by Staples, and it'll show the process of how that process will work. Staples Easy 3D lets you upload your own designs and order them as 3D printed objects, introducing a more affordable level of 3D printing. And you can do all of this within three minutes. Let's check it out. On the home page, you can immediately see some featured and popular items that people have uploaded and shared. That stuff looks pretty cool, but let's upload our own design. We'll go up to the main navigation menu and click on Create. Now this part is really easy. We'll just have to upload our design. Click on Browse and pick the design you want. Now click on Open. We'll just hit Print Directly. Next up is accepting the terms and conditions. Then click OK. The design will upload now. And it's ready. Now we have to log in. I don't have an account, so I will log in with Facebook. Like so. There. Now we'll hit Add to Cart. We can see this has been done at the top of our screen. Now we'll click View Cart. Of course, here we can see any products we have added to our cart, change the quantities and remove items from the cart. But since we're here to order, let's scroll down. Next to the price total, we'll click on the next button. So now we're in checkout. First, we'll be asked which account we want to use. But the one we're logged in with right now is fine, so I'll click continue. The next step is our billing and shipping information. I'll leave both addresses the same, since I'll just have this delivered to my home. So let's just fill it out, scroll down, and click continue. Next up are our shipping options. Here we can pick who we want to ship our object. Since this is a prototype, we'll just go with the custom shipping method. We can also leave comments here regarding the delivery. OK, so we'll scroll down and click continue. The last step is the payment. Currently, we can pick between Ogon and PayPal. Let's go for PayPal. Also, let's sign up for uh, the mailing list. Looking good. So we'll go down and submit this order. Now we just enter our PayPal information. And there, we're done. Our order has been placed successfully. And that's how you upload your own designs and order them as 3D printed objects within three minutes with staples. That was easy. So I don't know if you'd actually hear that, but <laughs> I hope you did. So that's just one of the examples of, of how you can use uh, the Staples store. So I'd like to thank you uh, for listening to my presentation. Um, I just tried to give a flavor of how I believe the 3D printing is really going to accelerate the whole innovation process. I think it's going to be a very exciting future, and we're really only at the very scraping the top of, of how big this industry is going to be. Thank you for your time. Thank you.